Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Youth Fiction and Nonfiction Announcements. I'm Julia Smith, Senior Editor, Books for Youth at Booklist. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. Links to today's slide presentation and title list were included in the reminder email you received from Zoom one hour ago. To download them, please open that email, scroll to the bottom, and click on the links you see there. You can also download the slides and title list by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question or need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions and we'll pass along all other questions to today's panelists so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Last but not least, Booklist offers closed captioning on all webinars. To enable or disable captions on your screen, please look for and click the live transcript icon on the toolbar mentioned above. From there, you can select show or hide subtitles from the menu that appears. If you choose to enable subtitles, you can adjust the size of the captions at any time by selecting subtitle settings. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Michael Plotz, Associate Marketing Manager at DK, Dina Sherman, School and Library Marketing Director at Disney Publishing Worldwide, Anna Erickson, Vice President Sales at The Creative Company, and Carolina Schwartz, Publisher Strategist at Clavis Publishing. First up, we'll hear from Michael Plotz. Michael is Associate Marketing Manager for Children's Titles at DK. He's been a member of the DK team two and a half years, but he's been reading DK books since he discovered them in his elementary school library. Michael's favorite thing about his current role is being able to express his passion for children's books through creative marketing campaigns. In his free time, Michael enjoys yoga, television, and collecting picture books. Thanks so much for being here, Michael. Hi, everyone. Good to be with you all here virtually today. I'm really excited to present today's list of titles to you. But before I dive in, I wanted to mention that the vast majority of books I've included in today's presentation are currently available in ebook format if the book has already published or will be made available in ebook format at the same time as their physical publication if that date is yet to come. I'll make a note of that though, either way uh, for each book when I come to it. So without further ado, on to the books. Our first book today is Bear and Bird Learn to Share, which introduces a new set of characters created by author and illustrator Johnny Lambert. Meet Huxley, the lovable and rather hungry bear. It is beginning to snow, which means it's almost time to hibernate. So Huxley, Bluebird, and their friends must set out to collect food to get them through the winter. But Huxley is really hungry and wants all the food for himself. Is there enough food for everyone? As you might be able to glean from that brief description, this charming board book touches on the importance of sharing and being a generous friend. Happily, I can report that Huxley and Bluebird will return in 2022 with two more books in the series. Bear and Bird Lend a Helping Hand publishes in spring 2022, and Bear and Bird Make Friends will come out in the fall. The first book in the series, though, is available starting December 14th, and you can also find it in ebook format. Next up is The Night the Moon Went Missing, a standalone picture book from author-illustrator Brendan Carney, who's quickly becoming one of our favorites at DK. Space can be lonely, so Moon likes to watch people down on Earth. There's just one problem. When Sun is out, everybody on Earth is happy to see him. But when Moon is out, everyone goes to sleep. This makes Moon upset, pretty understandably, I think. But what Moon doesn't know is that little Lucy loves to look up at Moon, and one clear night, she sees that Moon has disappeared. Can Lucy find Moon, and will Moon learn just how much everybody actually loves her? This is DK's second picture book with Brendan Carney, just finishing up that last slide, and here he brings his same distinctive style and muted color palette that we first saw in Fish, which published in fall 2020. The Night the Moon Went Missing is available starting December 21st, and you can also find it as an ebook. Then next up is another picture book, Anansi and the Golden Pot, 
written by Taye Selassie, whose adult novel, Ghana Must Go, debuted in 2013. Taye brings popular folktale figure Anansi into the present day, weaving a story about the dangers of greed and the importance of being kind. Kwaku has grown up hearing stories about the mischievous spider Anansi. He is given the nickname Anansi by his father because of his similarly sly ways. On a holiday to visit his beloved grandma in Ghana, Anansi the spider and Anansi the boy meet and discover a magical pot that can be filled with whatever they want. Anansi fills it again and again with his favorite stew and eats so much that he feels sick. Will he learn to share this wonderful gift? You'll have to wait just a bit longer for this one, which publishes on February 15th, but I know it will be well worth your patience. An ebook version will be made available alongside the physical format if you'd like to make note of that too. Aging up just slightly out of picture books, we have our early chapter book series for five to seven year olds, Verity Fairy. Verity means truth, and that is exactly what she does. She tells the truth all the time, and it often gets her into a lot of trouble. Young readers can follow Verity and her fairy friends in the fairy tale kingdom and see how they help good prevail over evil, making sure everyone lives happily ever after. These four books are all available now in paperback, hardcover, and ebook formats. And here you can see some sample spreads and illustrations. Expressive characters, simple text, and a splash of humor make Verity Fairy a captivating series. The interiors are black and white, but remain fun and playful nonetheless. Perfect for every young child to enjoy, these books will spark curiosity and imagination while gently touching on key social emotional skills and encouraging conversation around the difference between right and wrong. Now this next book, Dinosaurs and Other Prehistoric Life, is a beauty. It's the fourth in the series of gift titles for children seven plus that have released each fall. First, an anthology of intriguing animals in 2018, then The Wonders of Nature in 2019, and most recently, The Mysteries of the Universe in 2020. These books are always a top gift pick for the holidays, but they're also must-haves for your children's nonfiction reference collections. From Tyrannosaurus and saber-toothed cats to ferns and woolly mammoths, every page will captivate young readers as they travel through the history of the Earth. This collection of amazing dinosaurs, plants, and other prehistoric life will wow children and many adults too. Showcasing more than 90 remarkable fossils, such as a fearsome Tyrannosaurus skull, delicate fern leaf, and perfectly preserved woolly mammoth, everyone will find something to be captivated by. Each plant or animal is shown both photographically and illustrated, and children will love poring over the detailed close-up images. The storybook descriptions let them discover the myths and legends surrounding the organisms, as well as key facts about their natural history. Organized into the Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic eras, this book also features gold finishes on the cover, gilded pages, and a ribbon bookmark, making it extra special. As I mentioned, this is just the latest entry in our anthology series, which also includes the three books you see pictured here, each on a different topic. All four books are available now in hardcover and in ebook, and they all feature gold finishes and the other special touches I described on the last slide. And they definitely look great sitting side by side on a shelf together if you're looking to fill out your collection. You might have already seen these next titles and know about DK's brand new publishing partnership with the Metropolitan Museum of Art. These are the first two library friendly titles we have published with them, available now in hardcover and ebook. In this charming illustrated series of books to keep and collect, kids ages seven to nine can see what the artist saw and be inspired to create their own artworks too. The feedback on these titles has been fantastic thus far, and Georgia O'Keeffe has even received a starred review from Booklist, which states the text is concise, well-organized, and informative, a brief insightful introduction to the artist's work and life. This one is a must-have for your collection and a great way to keep the A in steam. And out next week, we have the third and fourth titles in this series, covering the lives and works of Faith Ringgold and Hoxai. In What the Artist Saw Faith Ringgold, readers will meet the inspiring American activist and artist herself and step into her life to learn what led her to mix different media and craft powerful stories into quilts. They'll travel with her from Harlem, New York, to Europe, Ghana, and Nigeria. Not only that, but they'll also be encouraged by prompts throughout the book to pick a cause that they care about and try combining it with fabric or sculpture to make their own artworks. Then stepping back in time, readers will also have the chance to meet groundbreaking Japanese artist Hokusai, who created more than 30,000 works of art during his lifetime 
including his famous woodcut views of the Great Wave off Kanagawa and Mount Fuji. As you'll hopefully be able to tell by these two slides, the illustration style of each book in the series is purposely distinct to reflect the singular inspiration of its subject. Last, at least for now, in our series with the Met is Lost in the Museum, a standalone seek and find adventure that follows seven-year-old Stevie as she explores the most exciting and intriguing galleries and exhibitions inside the Met. Young readers will be drawn into the world of art and prompted to locate a series of famous works to help Stevie find her way back to her family. On this museum adventure, readers will discover the Met's galleries of Greek and Roman art, ancient Egypt and modern and contemporary art, and will learn about the rarest and most beautiful objects found in the museum's prestigious galleries. And pictured here, you can see the European sculpture court. After Stevie's adventure comes to an end, kids can continue to learn about the art world and the book's extensive back matter section, which includes real life photography of key pieces from the Met's unparalleled collection. We're also excited to continue our partnership with the Met into 2022, so look for more books and new formats coming soon. Moving on from the Met, I am so excited to present this next series to you, our classic and much loved DKI Witness books, which have sold more than 50 million copies worldwide in the 30 years that they have been around. They've now gotten a makeover for modern young readers ages nine to 12, beginning with climate change, dinosaurs, rocks and minerals, and World War II. We've given both the covers and the interiors a fresh new look. Updated fonts and formatting create a modern reading experience for young learners and new photography and updated diagrams are featured throughout. There's also a new feature in the relaunch titles. Eyewitness text boxes, which you can see top center on this spread with the light blue header. And these boxes provide expanded background information on key subjects so kids can learn more about the topics they love without being distracted from the main ideas. And here's an equally beautiful spread from Rocks and Minerals for another visual example of just how stunning this revamped series looks. Another important note is that no matter the topic, all titles in the DKI Witness series are created alongside expert consultants on the particular subject area. And the next crop of DKI Witness books is almost here. You'll just have to wait until December 21st, so only about a month longer. These topics include ancient Egypt, hurricanes and tornadoes, ocean life, and the Titanic. All titles in this series will be available in simultaneous hardcover and paperback editions, and select titles will also be available as ebooks. And now we'll shift to the YA space, one that DK doesn't typically publish into, but Allies' real talk about showing up, screwing up, and trying again is for any teen or adult because we can all be allies. As an ally, you use your power, no matter how big or small, to support others. You learn and try and mess up and try harder. And this collection of true stories, which was just announced yesterday as one of Chicago Public Library's best of the best books of 2021, 17 critically acclaimed and best-selling YA authors get real about being an ally, needing an ally, and showing up for friends and strangers. I should emphasize that this title is not consumable despite having resources and ideas at the back. It is certainly library friendly and has even received a starred review from School Library Journal stating this stellar treasury of insightful and varied anecdotes provides readers with invaluable information as they navigate allyship. A discussion guide is also available, and I can share that link in the chat later if anyone is interested in taking a look. As I mentioned, this book includes contributions from 17 writers, all of whom are listed here, and covers everything from raw stories of racism and invisible disability to powerful moments of passing the mic. Overwhelmingly, these authors' personal accounts and anecdotes have the effect of making readers think about their own experiences and choices and how they can be a better ally. There are no easy answers, but this book helps you ask better questions. Self-reflection prompts, resources, journaling ideas, and further reading suggestions help you find out what you can do because we're all in this together and we all need allies. This one is available now in hardcover and also as an ebook. Lastly, I just wanted to share a quick reminder to follow us on social media to have all the latest DK news at your fingertips. Now more than ever, we are doing our best to share helpful, entertaining content for you to pass along to your students and patrons, and we hope you've all been finding it useful. I also wanted to mention that we have a dedicated section on our website, dk.com, called the Home Learning Hub, where we've been posting activity kits, lesson ideas, and other educational assets, so be sure to check back periodically to see what's new there. And last but not least, here are some important links and contact information. 
Up top is a reminder about the Home Learning Hub, which I just mentioned, and you can also find our current trade catalog on Edelweiss. You can also reach out to us with questions and comments at marketing at dk.com or let us know if there's something you'd like to see from us. We always love to hear from our librarian friends. Thanks very much for your time and I hope you all enjoy the rest of the webinar. Thank you, Michael. Next, we'll hear from Dina Sherman. Dina has been the Director of School and Library Marketing at Disney Hyperion since 2009. Prior to that, she was the School and Library Senior Marketing Manager at HarperCollins Children's Books. Dina received her MLS from the University of Pittsburgh and worked as a children's librarian for 10 years, first at the Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh and then at the Brooklyn Children's Museum. As a librarian, Dina wrote reviews for School Library Journal, including a starred review for Lori Hulse Anderson's Speak, and wrote articles and presented on the topic of museum and library collaborations. Take it away, Dina. Thanks, Julia. I'm excited to be presenting titles today from Disney Publishing, including some from our colleagues at National Geographic. For those of you who don't know, National Geographic is now part of the Disney family. Uh, so I'm happy to have their titles here. Starting off, we know that everyone is looking for more chapter books. And I'm happy to introduce the Aristokittens, a new illustrated chapter book series that follows the kittens from the Aristocats as they open a cafe for all the animals of Paris. We're launching the series with the first two books at once and the third will follow six months later. Moving on to middle grade, our best-selling and award-winning Rick Riordan Presents imprint continues with Tiger Honor, a companion novel to Yoon Ha Lee's Dragon Pearl, and then Aru Shah and the Nectar of Immortality, which is the final book in Roshni Chok Chokshi's Pandava series. We're also launching the first graphic novelization of the imprint with Arusha and the End of Time, adapted by veteran comic writer Joe Karamanga and illustrated by Punjabi Canadian artist Anu Chuhan. And lastly, we know that a lot of Rick Riordan's fans are growing up and are ready for something a little bit more mature. So we're launching the first YA novel of the imprint with Ballad and Dagger by Daniel Jose Older. This is the first in a duology and it's a music and magic filled YA urban fantasy about two teens who discover each other and their powers during a political battle within a unique diaspora community, which is the blended culture of pirates, Cuban Santeros, and Sephardic Jews. Solomar, The Sword of the Monarchs is by Newbery Honor author, uh, Newbery Honor author, excuse me, Pam Munoz Ryan. On the brink of her quinceanera and her official coronation, Solomar visits the OML forest to sit among the monarch butterflies. When the sun hits, it sends the butterflies humming and swirling around her, and she realizes she's been given a gift and a burden. She can now predict the near future and has become a protector of the young and weak butterflies. Tragedy strikes when a neighboring king invades while her father and brother are away and the remaining villagers are all taken hostage, except Solomar. She must find a way to save her family, the kingdom, and the future of the monarch butterflies from a greedy and dangerous king. We're thrilled to have Julie Kagawa join our list with Shinji Takahashi and the Mark of the Kotal, the first in a new series based on the Society of Explorers and Adventurers lore that exists across the Walt Disney Parks. Shinji Takahashi is just an ordinary, homeschooled, smart alecky orphan kid being raised by his globe-trotting Aunt Yui. But when a magical guardian decides to use him as a conduit to awaken its power, Shinji's life takes a turn for the anything but ordinary. Captured by the menacing Hightower Corporation, which is bent on using uh, on using the Guardian's magic for its own nefarious purposes. Shinji must team up with a brilliant young tech whiz named Lucy and her robot mouse Tinker in order to escape. Together, the two turn to the venerable Society of Explorers and Adventurers and its ragtag cast of spelunkers, hackers, map makers, pilots, and mythology experts, among other things, to return the Guardian to its rightful home and release Shinji from its magic, which seems to be draining his life force. Moving on to young adults, <clears throat> excuse me, in Every Generation is the first in an all new series by New York Times bestselling author, Kendari Blake. Frankie Rosenberg is passionate about the environment, a sophomore at New Sunnydale High School, and the daughter of the most powerful witch in Sunnydale history. Her mom, Willow, is slowly teaching her magic on the condition that she use it to better the world. But Frankie's happily quiet life is upended when new girl Haley shows up with the news that the annual Slayer convention has been the target of an attack. And all the Slayers, including Buffy, Faith, and Haley's older sister, Vi, might be dead. That means it's time for this generation Slayer to be born, but being the first ever Slayer witch means learning how to wield a stake while trying to control her budding powers. 
With the help of Haley, a werewolf named Jake, and a hot but nerdy sage demon, Frankie must become the Slayer, prevent the Hellmelt from opening again, and find out what happened to her Aunt Buffy before she's next. The Temperature of Me and You is by debut author Brian Zepka. 16-year-old Dylan has always wanted a boyfriend, but the suburbs surrounding Philadelphia don't have a lot in the way of options. He thought his winter was going to be full of boring shifts at the Dairy Queen until Jordan walks in, a completely normal and undeniably cute boy who also happens to run at a cool 110 degrees Fahrenheit. When the boys start spending time together, Dylan begins feeling all kinds of ways. But when he spikes a fever for two weeks and is suddenly coughing flames, he thinks he might be suffering from something more than just a crush. Jordan forces Dylan to keep his symptoms a secret, but as the pressure mounts and Dylan becomes distant with his closest friends and family, he pushes Jordan for answers about why he's like this, where he came from, and who's after him. National Book Award finalist and New York Times bestselling author Evie Zaboy joins the Marvel Universe with Akoye to the People. This is Akoye as a teen, so before the what takes place in the comics and the movie. Akoye is a new recruit for King T'Chaka's royal guard, the Dora Milaje. But when Akoye is sent on her very first mission to accompany T'Chaka on a humanitarian trip to America, she'll learn that her status as a Dora means nothing to New Yorkers, and her expectations for the world outside of her own quickly fall apart. Akoye finds herself trying to help teens dealing with addiction and gentrification in a forgotten neighborhood in Brooklyn. The Rumor Game is a new book from the New York Times bestselling authors of Tiny Pretty Things, which was made into a series on Netflix, and I am desperately waiting for season two. This is a twisty, diverse, and fast-paced drama about a rumor that spirals out of control and sows chaos in a posh private school in DC. Told in alternating voices, the book tackles today's hot button issues from fat shaming to cyberbullying to assault, keeping readers turning pages while contributing to important conversations about self-image and consent. And now moving on to National Geographic. Zeus the hamster and his kooky critter companions are back in their fourth adventure in the Zeus the Mighty series. The latest threat to ancient Greece is an all-seeing, multi-headed guard dog named Cerebrus, and to free Zeus from from him, excuse me, and to free Zeus from him, the other Olympians find themselves venturing deep into the belly of the creepy, crawly underworld. This fact-based fiction series combines the power of awesome storytelling with real information about animals and culture. Now, when you picture a pirate, who comes to mind? Maybe Blackbeard, Captain Kidd or even Captain Hook or Jack Sparrow. I mean, we are Disney after all. But did you know that the most powerful pirate who ever lived was a woman? Pirate queens will take everything you thought you knew about those swashbuckling stereotypes and turn them upside down to prove that women have been making their mark in all aspects of history, even the high seas. It includes original poems along with fast, oh, sorry, could you go back? My apologies, I think I'm missing a slide here. Um, it includes original poems along with fascinating supplemental text about the marauding life and times of each dastardly damsel and has been vetted by the world's leading pirate experts and historians. Now we can go, thank you. A naked mole rat instant messages a warthog. A goblin shark po posts a gorgeous selfie. And a black bear reviews a back scratcher on Amazon. One star, not nearly as effective as a good old fashioned tree. These are just some of the hilarious digital encounters you'll find in Critter Chat, the first book in a new series where we imagine real animals, not so real social media interactions. But there's substance in the silliness. Every joke is based on real information about animal habitats and behavior. Inspired by the kid-tested success of National Geographic Kids Magazine's Critter Chat feature, which scored consistently well with the kids panel, and the continued hits in the humor market with the Just Joking franchise, this new series falls in a sweet spot for National Geographic Kids. Beyond Possible is a young reader's edition of Nepali climber Nims Purja's memoir tied to the acclaimed Netflix documentary, 14 Peaks. From his childhood growing up in Nepal to a career as an elite soldier in the British army, Purja shows how his early life shaped him and enabled him to go beyond what people thought was possible. The book comes with an insert featuring photos from Purja's childhood and climbing career to help illustrate a story and put readers right there on the mountain with him. Speak Up, Speak Out by award-winning author Tanya Bolden is the story of how fighting Shirley Chisholm, an African-American daughter of immigrants, defied the odds, was elected to Congress, and ran for president of the United States. Bolden's captivating retelling of Shirley Chisholm's life will include a National Geographic map showing important locations in her life, a photo insert with historical photos, and a foreword by the amazing Stacey Abrams. And last up, we have No Boundaries. Authors Gabby Salazar and Clara Fiesler, both National Geographic explorers and filmmakers, began this project by interviewing women who inspired them. 
Rather than choosing to profile already famous women like Jane Goodall or Sylvia Earle, they reached out to lesser known rising stars, explorers and activists that young readers may not have heard of, but who are impressive and inspiring in their own right, who are out there right now changing the world. Each profile told in third person is accompanied by interview quotes and stunning photographs, and is followed by an interstitial that gives contextual information about the animals, places, and ideas mentioned in the story. That's it for me. These are all the places you can find us on social and our website and catalog. And while we do have some print galleys available, it's always best to check Net Galley and Alewise first. Thank you. Thanks, Dina. Our next presenter will be Anna Erickson. Anna has worked in the children's publishing industry for over 25 years and is stubbornly convinced that all children deserve access to high quality reading material. She is based in Oakland, California. Thanks for joining us, Anna. The floor is yours. Thank you, Julia. It's great to be here. I hope everyone's having a good week. All right, um, I'm here to present the highlights from the Fall 21 list from the Creative Company, as well as our distributed partners, Amicus and Black Rabbit. Together, we form the ABCs, Amicus, Black Rabbit, and Creative of Children's Literature. We publish picture books, board books, and series nonfiction for grades kindergarten all the way through high school. And the books that we are going to look at today are available in both print and ebook. All right, we'll start with Creative Editions, which is the picture book imprint of the creative company, and kick it off with Batwings, Catwings. This is a picture book by Laura Gell with um, illustrations by Monique Felix, and it gives children the chance to compare real animals with slightly surreal animals, and even better to answer the question, are moose antlers real? Yes. Are goose antlers real? No. And the joy of being able to shout not just yes, but no, in um, a robust voice never fails to please. So this is natural history with a fun twist. As is, I love you with all of my hearts, which takes the classic I love you kind of title and gives it a natural history twist. So within this book, we look at a series of animals and their unique characteristics and how those might fancifully be expressed as, um, as, a, as, as expressions of love. So for example, with an elephant, we meet his giant ears with an octopus. We meet not just this one heart, but his three hearts as an octopus does have three hearts. Um, I Love You With All of My Hearts is followed by another book on um, animals called I Am Elephant by former children's poet laureate J. Patrick Lewis and illustrations by Miriam Nerlove. This is the follow-up to the book they did previously, I Am Polar Bear. And like the first book, it takes a first person perspective and um, presents the animal in all of its majesty and glory. In this case, the matriarchal elephants, their compassion, their ability to express emotion to one another. Also shares a lot about how um, elephants are characterized, named and perceived by different cultures around the world and ex includes um, in extensive back matter. All right, moving over to our sister company, Amicus, and their picture books for fall. Amicus does books for younger children. Um, they are accessible, friendly, and fun. The word Amicus means friend in Latin, and that plays out in everything that they do. In my room is a zoo. We meet a young fellow who is headed to bed. Bedtime should be quiet time, right? Well, maybe not if your bedroom is a zoo with a zoo full of animals named um, from A to Z, from aardvark to crocodile to narwhal and on. He's trying to go to sleep, but there's a rumpus kicking up and our fine fellow here has to deal with putting all of this motley crew to bed themselves. So we get an alphabet theme as well as a fun rhyming read aloud and a great bedtime tale. Eventually, everybody settles in. A Little Round Panda on the Big Blue Earth introduces us to this friendly fella, a little round panda, and asks, where is his place on this Big Blue Earth? And answers that question by gradually pulling out 
farther and farther and farther. So you can see that his little corner in the bamboo forest is on a hill covered in mist. And then you pull out farther to see that that hill is on a mountain and farther and farther and farther till ultimately you get um, almost a view as if you're from space. There's neat little features in this um, story as no matter how far you pull out, you'll always find a panda within the, the illustration. It's almost like an Easter egg game. And this book follows the um, Little Brown Monkey book that came previously. Next up is um, they're tearing up Mulberry Street. And this is by author Yvonne Ng. In addition to being a giant Dr. Seuss fan, <coughs> excuse me, it's a child, Yvonne is also fascinated by how things work. And she grew up to be an engineer with a specialty on introducing kids to STEM topics um, and a mission to get girls involved in STEM as much as boys. So in their tearing up Mulberry Street, she uses an homage to Dr. Seuss's Mulberry Street book to explain how a street is built. Um, so she introduces all of the heavy equipment, the machinery and the process involved in tearing up a street and rebuilding it anew. Who knew under the apple tree by Lori Lorazzo Knowlton with illustrations by Steph Marshall asked the question, who knew it was fall and when and how did they communicate that information? So it starts um, with a series of animals who figure it out and explains how they know that the season is changing by the apples ripening on a tree and then how they spread that information amongst themselves. All right, shifting gears to the series nonfiction, um, we'll take a look at Black Rabbit Books, which is the home of Bolt. Bolt is an imprint dedicated to readers at risk and reluctant readers at the third grade level, the interest range spreads all the way from second on up. And these are um, high interest titles with a focus on great graphics and presenting information, not just in text, but in high quality visuals as well. So this season, Bolt presents natural disasters, a topic which is becoming all too needed and all too common. And was as with all of the Bolt books, you'll see um, amazing, amazing information here made accessible in a visual way. Again, always with an eye to pulling in the kids who are dealing with a lot of distractions for their time and attention and may not turn to a book automatically. We want to get them into a book and keep them in, in reading for life. And that's certainly true with Slithering Snakes, which introduces a nice host of our fine friends available in both English and Spanish and covering a range of topics, including stats on each of the snakes, such as the colorful cobra. Um, dinosaur discovery applies a similar treatment, but to animals of the past with a range of dinosaurs, again, with great graphics, as well as um, these increasingly high quality computer generated illustrations to bring these dinosaurs to life. Great compare and contrast, great first person perspectives, if only we were there to see the Velociraptor as it was. Okay, moving up to the higher levels, Bookstaves has a new series for this, this season. And um, Bookstaves is part of Amicus, and it is the imprint that has a special digital feature built into each of its books. Each title that you buy from the 12 story library within Bookstaves gives you a QR code. And that QR code leads you not only to a website for that particular book, but also to um, a free version of the ebook for that book. So that's all in one. And this time um, 12 Story does an extension of its popular sports report series. So this is a wide ranging series. And as with all 12 story titles, it includes 12 stories built into a book. So you can dip into a single story at a time presented on a spread as we see here, or you read all 12 to get the full narrative arc of the topic at hand. All right, last but not least, um, creative education and creative paperbacks bring a spotlight on nature which gives us a day in the life look at a range of animals 
um, presented at the fourth grade level and up um, all the way fourth, fifth, sixth. Um, these are amazing images, high quality design and a ton of information in a very literary text. They are some of the most compelling single subject animal titles, in my opinion, available at the higher reading levels. And last but not least, Odysseys and Mysteries is from our Odysseys High School program. These are 60 page books that um, don't stint on the design and the images, even though they are presented at a much higher high school level readings level. All right, that's a sampling of what's available from our family of companies. Check out the creativecompany.us for more. And we look forward to seeing you later this fall. Thank you so much, Anna. Our final presenter will be Carolina Schwartz. Carolina is the publisher strategist with close to 20 years of experience in marketing, sales, and content development. She has worked with publishers of different sizes in Europe, Latin America, Canada, and the US, developing systems that generate ongoing demand for their titles and reduce returns. She currently runs the sales and marketing efforts of Clavis Publishing in the US, among other clients. Thank you so much for joining us, Carolina. Thank you uh, so much. I am sorry, I just, ah, trying to share my screen. Uh, can you see it? It says it's it failed to, I'm sorry, it's saying, it failed to share my screen. I am so sorry. It give me one second, please. I'm so sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, let's try one more time. I can share my screen one more time. All right, there we are. <laughs> um, Hi, my name is Carolina Schwartz. I am uh, so happy to be here with you today. And I am going to um, be um, telling you a little bit about Clavis and uh, the editorial list, the publishing list here in the US. And uh, I wanted to start by giving you a little bit of background into Clavis books. For those of you who are not familiar with the, with the imprint, Clavis is an independent global leader in children's publisher uh, celebrating 40 plus years of independent publishing uh, based. Uh, the home office is in Belgium and uh, we do have a smaller office here in New York City. Clavis does about 60 fiction and nonfiction titles um, every year here in the US for uh, children ages zero to eight, and we're pushing that age group a little bit higher, both in fiction and uh, both for fiction and nonfiction. The list is comprised of very diverse themes, um, including humorous stories, titles that foster language and social emotional development, or books with heavier topics, such as talking about death, illness, and separation. Because Clavis is such a, um, an independent publisher, we have a global pool of talent uh, hailing primarily from Europe and Asia with a growing list of American names, including debut authors and illustrators, such as the three that are gonna kick off the list today, as well as best-selling creators that have sold millions of copies around the, wor the world. Some of you, uh, you might've heard um, the names of Gita Van Genichen, the author of The Little White Fish or Gilbert the Ghost, and Anita Peterborsch, the author of Everyone is Yawning. Clavis has a very robust toddler uh, list, which is tailored for every stage of the development from zero to three and focuses on the most important things in the life of the young kids. It also has a list uh, of award winning titles, including USPBY's award recipients and ALA most notable titles among others. Um, behind, I wanted to give you just to uh, <clears throat> tell you a little bit about the toddler books. On the back of each toddler book of every Clavis toddler book, you will find a color coded train system, which tells you the specific age group and the skill set that that book is um, focusing on. 
And without much further ado, this is, uh, I wanted to start with just a brief recap of some of the fall 2021 titles that uh, published recently, actually a couple of weeks ago, and might have, uh, might have gotten overlooked. Um, we start with the three winners of the Key Colors competition, which is an international competition Clavis has been holding in, uh, around the world since 1996. And it uh, discovered great talent that went on to sell millions of copies around the world. We brought the competition over to the United States in 2020. Um, some of the jury members included um, uh, Emma Cantor over at PW, Children's Book Deputy Editor, and uh, booksellers, illustrators, and the likes. We had over 156 entries, and these are the winners. The goal uh, winner was My Key, an ode to libraries and the power of imagination. All three titles published on the same day. Publishers Weekly called it, nothing stops the protagonists from doing what they want to do. And ma they master every situ situation in this exhilarating outing. Then we have Sumi Sweater by Susie O. Oh. Uh, Sumi is a very sweet story about a little girl and her favorite sweater and Sumi and Susie created Sumi with a child in mind and the story is about this little girl who has a sweater and the sweater has a tear and the tear gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Susie created this, uh, this story to um, to get in the shoes of a little kid and what the kid would do with a precious uh, when a precious possession gets damaged. Booklist called it a promising picture book debut for Susie O, oh, a Korean American author illustrator and a good choice for reading aloud. And lastly, we have Doris's Dear Delinquents. Publisher Weekly calls it an alphabet book with just the right amount of toothy mayhem and Booklist calls it a funny romp through the alphabet, reinforcing concepts while providing loads of laughs. Now on to our spring 2022 list. The list, um, we start the list with a new installment in the profession series. This series is by author illustrator Lisbeth Sliegers. This list is publishing in March. Other titles in the series, as you can see down there, include nurses and what they do, astronauts and what they do, and optometrists and what they do, including chefs and pilots, doctors, and uh, many other professions. This, in this particular occasion, um, the astronomer, it follows a female astronomer as, um, as she goes up on a, trip, on a trip up a mountain to observe the stars. The profession series is, um, uh, tells the, the it presents ch children with non-fiction information about all the different professions. As you can see here in the illustrations, you can, it, it walks uh, children through the tools used in different professions, the, um, the clothes that a certain professional wears and daily activities and what they do throughout their job. It's pretty self-explanatory. Next up, we have Great Minds, and this is the first, uh, Alexander Van Humboldt, this is the first title in, the, in a new series called Great Minds, which introduces young children to the greatest scientist of all time. This book pushes the age group uh, of Clavis for the first time beyond the eight years of age. And in this case, it follows young Alexander Van Humboldt as uh, he becomes the father of the climate change uh, movement. The title explores his contributions to the study of the environment and includes science facts together with questions that prompt exploration and research. It is a great title to introduce climate change within a historical concept and also reinforce and foster independent research between readers. Luke and Lottie and their vegetable garden follows twins Luke and Lottie. This is a very popular series here in the United States as they grow their own vegetables. It uh, also has a Spanish edition and in the spring of 2022, Clavis will be introducing a number of titles that are gonna be published in US slash Latin American Spanish here in the US. Luke and Lottie is one of those titles. 
Luke and Lottie, they're gardening and it follows the twins as um, it follows the twins as they grow their own vegetables, they plant baby lettuce, radishes, and strawberry plants, and then they go on to eat all of their uh, yummy, um, yummy plants and, and seeds. It's, gr it's a great vocabulary builder as it deals with fruit, vegetables, clothing, and all the gardening tools, and it is just an overall great spring season title. You can see them all. Uh, this this last spread is in Spanish. You can see them enjoying all the food that they planted. Next up, we have the purple pail. Uh, this is the story of a pail that travels across oceans, rivers, and land, and it shows up uh, in uh, through a, on at, at different countries as different kids around the world find the purple pail that goes missing. Each spread. Uh, depicts the child from a different country with their local names and a scene from a local setting and it also includes the pronunciation and the translation of purple pale into that language. At the end of the, the book, the uh, end papers includes a glossary that, um, that lists the country's portrait together with the phonetics of each name and the world pur purple pale in the different languages. This is a great title to talk about different cultures and different uh, costumes. This is a book by Christine Euronimo. She uh, loves to write stories that provide windows to our world. She is the author of A Thirst for Home, which came out in 2015 and was, an, and was a notable social studies trait book for young people. We have Summer Fun, uh, Summer Fun, sorry, uh, next up. This is a book for, by Anita Wiederborsch, who you might know as the author of Everyone is Yawning, a Kirkus Best Book. This is a truly fun book where readers are asked to shake the book, move the book clockwise, and even blow through it to make bubbles, turning it into a super fun interactive story. It is perfect to go over summer activities and enjoy time under and talk about enjoying time under the sun. It is a great title to spark creativity, and it does have very cheerful characters and bright, vibrant colors. Hop and Swimming Class is another title that uh, is going to be available both in Spanish and in English. This is by author, illustrator Esther Vandenberg, who is the author of Good Night, Sleep Tight and First Day of School. This is a super, super fun title where all the tadpoles in the pot have turned into little frogs. They all take swimming lessons and quickly learn to swim, but not Hop. He has a little bit of trouble and gets very easily distracted by the scenery, but he eventually learns to float and swim, and he ends up cannonballing his way down to the, to the water. Um, it does have contrasting colors and very lively illustrations. It has, it's very relatable and perfect for the summer. It does have a super lovable character. Doggy is the last title I'm going to be uh, presenting today. This is by author illustrator Nancy Armo, who does not love a book that has a, a cat on the cover, but it's actually titled Doggy. This is a fun book about a boy who truly wanted a dog. He tried to make the case to his mom, but uh, he uh, did not win her over up until one day there's this little cat and you can see there in the illustration, a straight cat shows up and they decide to, um, keep the cat, they decide to adopt the cat, but this boy wants to turn the cat into a dog and the cat won't turn into a dog. Eventually, he ends up falling in love with his very perfect doggy. It is a fun title about loving dogs, cats and pets. It's a great title to introduce caring and living with a pet and finding the perfect companion in a pet. It's also a great title full of surprises and uh, about life's full life surprises and expectations. You can uh, shoot me an email if you would like to receive more information um, or um, uh, some advanced readers copies of some of these titles. You have my information over there. Uh, you can also visit Clavis Publishing. You can uh, request some of these titles on NetGalley and um, let us know if you have any other questions 
or we can help you out in some other way. Thank you so much for your time today, and I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you so much, Carolina, and a big thank you to all of today's wonderful panelists. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's title list, PowerPoint slides, video recording, and certificate of completion. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit booklistonline.com slash webinars, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones like what you see here. Not yet a subscriber? Pair the page-by-page -page reading experience of print with the convenience of online access at booklistonline.com and lock in print, online, digital, and archive access by taking advantage of this special webinar offer to get Booklist for only $75. Patron-friendly, librarian approved, and free with Booklist subscriptions, Booklist Reader is Booklist's new digital-only magazine, highlighting diverse readers' advisory recommendations for all ages. To see and share the latest issue, which is currently freely available to all, visit booklistonline.com slash reader hyphen issues. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. One more huge thank you to all our panelists and our sponsors, DK, Disney Publishing Worldwide, Clavis Publishing, and The Creative Company. This concludes today's webinar.